future Worship regardless Hey young people Don't be discouraged Just be encouraged Don't be frustrated Just be elated God's got plan for you He wants not to prosper you He will take care of you Let him finish that work in you all about the future, yeah. Oh, yeah. Simon Zion, you too. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone, to another series of The Buzz. It's your host, Nicole, with my co host, Remain, here again on another episode of The Buzz. And we thank you all for joining us as you often do. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting. And truly, we hope that even as we we come from time to time, you, this platform may be a blessing to your soul. And so we're still on our mini series of godly relationships and sexuality. And so this evening, we're going to dive into sexuality um, bring out some points as to what it is relate as it relates to um, biblical principle. And so, on our last episode, we we addressed um, gender, gender roles, um, what society has to say about it, as well as what God has to say about it. And so, this evening, we want to continue our mini series with um, talking about sexuality and how can we address this um, topic from a, a spiritual point of view, as well as address how we we handle those who may face sexuality issues in and outside of the church. And so we're going to get right into our topic for this season or, or this um, session. And so, um, Romaine, you want to agree? <laughs> All right, so um, we're on the topic of sexuality, and we know that this is a, a topic that is that sparks some things right anytime people anytime there's a is the word sex attached to anything <laughs> it's interesting. and so you know this topic is one of those topics that you know really need um defining and so um what what really is sexuality can we 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 define it um what's up again my people uh, as you, as Nicole said, we're, we're back again with uh, this mini series, and this is really a tough one uh, because you really can't define sexuality without talking about sex, right? Um, luckily for us, we kind of broke down, uh, or hopefully we did, some of the the definitions last last episode about genders, male and female. Right. And so in the biblical sense, sexuality has to be defined within that context. Right. Uh, but what the relationship, the the physical, the emotional, the psychological uh, relationship between uh, a man and a woman. Um, however, we also recognize that in the world that we live in, they have, for lack of a better word, opened up the door uh, to allow a lot of different ensembles. But in, in any case, it's really in reference to the, 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 how attracted, I guess, someone is to another person, right? Um, and how that same attraction is expressed. Right. So in, in a nutshell, that's that's what sexuality um, is understood to be. Me as a man, what am I attracted to and how do I express my attraction? Right. You as a woman, what are you attracted to and how do you express that attraction? Uh, so in a, in, a, in a general sense, that's how I perceive sexuality is defined. All right. All right. Thank you for giving us that spiritual aspect of what um, sexuality is, as well as how the society sees it. Now, there is one particular definition that I found very interesting, and it's in relation to what you said. Um, it says a person's identity 
in relation to the gender or genders to which they are typically attracted to, sexual orientation. Now, this definition just added on some things. A lot of different things. <laughs> A lot of different things. Said. So this is what makes it complicated. Now it says it's in relation to your identity and gender or genders. We've we've established this in the last episodes, in the last episode regarding you know gender role and you know, multiple genders that um, now um, apparently exist. But as you rightly stated from a, a spiritual point of view that we have to define it in the biblical sense. And as we know that this is a, a spiritual platform. Now, sexuality, how do we address it among ourselves when we find individuals who identify themselves male and female, however, their attraction is to um, their own kind, or they say that their sexual orientation, not that they they identify as these things, but they're having a struggle trying to figure out if, if this is what they are attracted to, if they're attracted to the same person or the opposite. How do we address that from a spiritual point of view? That's that 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 can be a, a little bit complicated. Um because there is a, a lot of different things that ties into someone's sexuality, right? Um, your upbringing, what you are exposed to, right? At an early age, different circumstances that happens in your life and uh, different kind of trauma. All of these things affect the way you perceive and also experience uh, sex and different sexual um, different sexual encounters, right? And so, in order to to appropriately address some of these issues, it's it's very important for us to actually sit down with individuals and see what's going on in their life. What, what happened in their life that brought them to be identifying themselves with these kind of different situations? What I've seen is that a lot of the times when persons experience trauma, right? There is one of two general things that happen, right? It's either that person becomes overly sexual, Right, so become hypersexual, right? Um, or they just completely shut down from sex. They don't want people to touch them. They don't want people to go around them and interact with them. And so that's 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 the first that's that's the first um, door that they they choose. Am I just gonna go head on into sex because I I don't appreciate my body or I don't see my worth or my value? Or am I so scarred that I don't want anybody else to come and interfere with that bubble? Something else that could happen is that, all right, if a particular person hurt me or a particular group of people hurt me, I don't want to deal with them no more, right? And so they turn to um, they turn to the opposite gender, right? They turn to the same sex. Or what else could happen is parents not teaching their children appropriately. And I think that's what's happening more now in our society is that we've become so free and so loose with uh, wanting to be woke and free is that parents just refuse to correct their boys when they're doing feminine things or their girls when they're doing masculine things. Because as we mentioned last week, um, those lines are getting blurred, right? And so for me personally, I don't I don't know if there is a broad brush answer on how to on how to step by step attack all the issues. But I think on a more individual basis, getting to know the person, understanding what has happened to the person, you 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 can see a clearer picture of why they even choose to identify. 
um, themselves with some with something like that. Okay. All right. I mean, that 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 point is valid. I mean, it 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 sets a foundation for how do we address this concern? Yeah. Uh, topic. And one thing that I want to in particular address is I know I asked the question, how do we deal with these individuals? So now we've 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 in a spiritual sense, now we we have people, let's say we have individuals who are in the body of Christ that express that they're struggling with their sexuality, they're struggling with knowing who the gender that they want to be with, and they find themselves attracted to the same gender, or they find themselves not attracted to any gender, right? So we have those concerns. Now, do we because I, I, I like the foundation that you laid because sometimes we 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 are so spiritual. <laughs> we're very spiritual. We, we're, or should I say spirited? We, 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 you know, we do understand that we live in a natural world and a spiritual world at the same time. Now, do we, when those, ex, those individuals express what they're struggling with, is it a, then appropriate to, you know, this is the only approach. This is your only approach. Call a fast and bring only them at the No, no. Them at the altar. Fast with them, pray and, and rebuke what is going on in them. Right? Only approach. You you bring it to the no. church. Say that you know this individual, you know, has um, expressed that they're struggling with this, and I think mm-hmm. as a church we should come together and pray for this individual. Fast with this individual, and we go and rebuke this spirit away. That's the approach. No, is that appropriate? Is that sufficient for individuals who are undergoing this? I am a young man, right? But I've been in the church all my life. And if it's one thing I know is that prayer does not take the place of duty, right? After you pray, after you fast, after you rebuke, after you do all that stuff, there's still work that needs to be done. Right, you still have to check in on people. You still have to counsel people. The Bible say you're not you're not supposed to say be the one, right? When you're ready, one close, right? Faith and works. And so while you're praying, while you're fasting, while you're doing all these uh, spiritual things, which is absolutely necessary, right? There is also practical things that need to happen, right? These people need counseling. These people need to correcting and speaking to. Right. Again, you need to find out what are the triggers. What? How did they get here in the first place? Right. There's a lot of persons that claim that they're born this way. I disagree with that 100 percent from a from a biological perspective. There is no true indication. There's no real study out there that can fully support that. OK, I born male. Um, um, I'm sexually attracted to 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 another man there's there's no gene there is no uh hormone that 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 instigates any of this and so there is something that is going on in the in the embryonic stage of these people's lives that that kind of for one way or another uh nurture that kind of and foster that kind of a behavior right um so while we pray while we fast we also work I think your question then is, what does the work look like, right? Right. Again, I feel it is going to be dependent on a lot of different factors. What age group are we talking about, right? Are we talking about uh, uh, a young seven-year-old that's still spongy, still soaking up information, doesn't really understand what's going on, right? Are we talking about a teenager that's, been through different struggles, different um, abuse, different peer pressure, right? Are you talking about uh, a, a, a man that's, you know, in his 30s, 40s, lived all his life uh, uh, with his wife, right? And all of a sudden, he just gets up and decides, that, why? I don't feel like I'm attracted to women anymore. You know what I'm saying? These things don't just, it's not a, it's not a light bulb, it's not a switch that goes off. Is there something that is happening that is propagating this kind of a thing? And so if we can 
get to those things uh, with the proper counseling, with the proper uh, teaching, with the proper correcting of behavior, we can start to see, first of all, what the issue is and then correct the issue, right? You, you never go to a doctor and you tell your doctor, oh, I'm having chest pain. And then 30 minutes later, he's cutting your chest open, right? There are tests that are being done. There, he's running different kind of things to figure out, all right, what is the cause? Do we actually need to go in and get anything out? If we're going to go in and get anything out, we need to be very specific because this is a very dangerous procedure and all that kind of stuff. And the wrong, if you put the wrong thing, you, you, you're liable of, of um, this person dying, right? You're liable of, of something else be going wrong, right? And so while we're working on uh, finding the underlying cause, we have to also be mindful that we don't push them too far that they don't even want to hear what we're saying. They don't even want to uh, receive us. And I think one of the most important things that we do is approach this situation with love, right? I think the, the, the LGBTQ community has abused that word right? Misappropriated it. I don't even think they understand what love is, but it's their theme word, right? Um, but if we, as the, the church of the living God, can actually execute the appropriate love that God, that God desire us to do, right? Um, yes, not everybody is going to take to it because once you start to push against them, some of them get very defensive, but on the same time, we have to start get, get getting rid of the boom bye bye culture. We have to start getting rid of Chichiman must dead, um, pizza whatever whatever must get a gunshot and all them with it, right? We have to start taking a different approach because that's not shining the light of Christ, right? And I'm sorry to say, Church of God, if if you are if you are thinking in yourself, boy, every time you see a homosexual or a bisexual or a transgender or whatever, and your first instinct is that, you know, you have to stone them or any kind of thing like that. I think you've completely missed the gospel. I believe that your heart has not yet been changed by the words of God. Right. And again, he that winneth a soul is wise. Our aim is not to call down fire as some of the apostles wanted to. Right. But, to preach a message of repentance, right? And so let God do the burning, let God do the chastising. Our, our aim and our responsibility is to, is to reach these lost people. That's what they are. They're lost, they're dark, right? And, and our aim is to be the light, to be the salt and to reach them. And so I would, I would suggest, again, being very, being very careful because how you deal with a, 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 a young person navigating information versus a teen who has a little bit more experience, whether it be good or bad, versus an adult who's been through life, right? It, it, the, the approach that you take is going to be slightly different, right? Now, break the tree from it young. If you see a girl or you see a son um, doing something that is unorthodox, correct it from then, correct it early. You don't wait until they get to get to, to, to teenage years, just start talking to them because the hormones are going to start kicking, right? And we know young people, right? So, we, so some, some of us, we, we try to, to maintain our composure or whatever, but in the right situation, well, is it the right situation? In the wrong situation, in the heat of the passion at the moment and anything, anything can happen, right? And so if you, if you start to teach, because that's also sexuality, you know, it's not just it's not just um um same sex and no sex and all sex, but even in heterosexual relationships, how do we control ourselves, right? How do we how do we work within the boundaries that God gives us? Not that one man to talk to woman, right? But we also can't we can't um cross those boundaries, and so teaching persons the appropriate thing can help resolve a lot of the issues that we're having. All right, and and Romaine and our listening um audience, there is always a wise approach to every every oh, yeah. without a doubt a wise approach, and you touch on some of the things that I had in mind, and um those listening, 
this episode or this um topic we're not here to 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 bash anyone we're not here to put down anyone we're not here to to say that anybody who find themselves with this struggle you're bone for hell we're we're not we're not saying that we're addressing the reality of this present not among just um children of god but how we interact with others outside who has you know been struggling with this issue or yeah. you know confused rather with you know who they are or what they want no i'm i'm always i'm an advocate for spiritual education and oh, I think we need to be spiritually educated and more and more you see and you see because we 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 categorize sin and we put them in a big glass and a little glass and <laughs> There's some more, more, there's some sins that we're more aggressive towards. Yeah. And, and you know, given the culture that we've we've grown up in, this is one thing that we attack, you know, more than anything else, not not realizing that the Bible says lying lips are an abomination, just like uh-huh. homosexuality. It's an abomination. abomination. The reality is that we do have people within the body of Christ that struggle with this, the um this issue struggling with um being sexually attracted to their own kind now we don't start off with just rebuking we understand that it's a, it's a deeper force than themselves however like you said along with praying and and fasting on these individuals behalf th- there's a deeper thing think about the the mental state and that is why romain a lot of people who are in church who who has um the who have these issues they don't express them no because the atmosphere is not created and the way that we 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 look at these things we look at it as if you know the, like you said uh, hellfire and, and brimstone and all of that yes we understand that the, that's the judgment that's the judgment yeah that's, that's what's coming made, right but we're we're not saying that as as a church we should shun these individuals. We have people in the church struggling with anger. Come on, man. Struggling with anger. And the Bible says anger is in the bosom of fools. We have people who are preach, Brother Romain. People who are encouraging. Yeah. They're still are struggling with anger and anger gets the best of them at times. Yeah. Right? We have people who are in the church struggling with all different kinds of insecurities. People struggling with pornography. Right? Yeah. All different kinds of struggles are present in the church of God. And so don't think that, you know, finding somebody who has an attraction to their own kind is anything out of the norm. And I want to say, if there's anybody who listens to this podcast and you're in this category, it's, it's what you're facing or what you're struggling with. It is abnormal. It is abnormal. However, there is also hope. Yeah. If if you acknowledge that this is a struggle for you, then you can be you can overcome it. Why? Because it, what I mean by that, you see, if it's not a struggle, Romaine, y- you own it. But if it's a struggle, <laughs> for you, right? You can overcome it because yeah. if, if you're not fighting against anything, you're already subject to it. Already, come but on, on there, anybody, preach. anybody who find himself in this state and you recognize and you say, God. I know that this isn't the way you design it to be, but this is the fight that I'm having. There are people, that's why I think Romaine will really have to present ourselves in a relatable manner where people can talk to us. And like you said, we don't know what people go through. That's we true. Don't know the experiences that they've had. And so instead of casting judgment, casting stones and all of these things, and sometimes we wonder why. We we don't convert a lot of people. Well, it's not us, us doing the conversion, but I guess if it, if it's us trying to do the conversion, that's the reason why we haven't converted <laughs> anybody because we're not taking the right approach. And so, what what we're saying is that if you find yourself struggling with your sexuality, right, there is hope for you. Don't think that you're the only one. I, I'm I'm a hundred percent sure I wasn't there back in in the in the early stages of the church. Yeah. However, I think people in the church had these issues. Even Paul addressed a man that slept with his own, um, his own, own father's wife. So all, all kind of sin, nothing is new under the sun. So anything you face now, someone before you has faced it. And so 
yes, we pray with you. Yes, we fast with you. Yes, we read with you. And yes, you have the, the, the ability to change. But there is also something beyond that. You need counseling. Oh, yeah. We, you need intervention because these things aren't normal. And like you said, Romaine, the, the, the bigger question is how do we help outside of um, giving them spiritual things? How do we help? Because you can't just present, if a woman is struggling with, you know, being attracted to her own kind, not just putting a man in front of her 24-7 and say, yo, this is the way. This is the way, you know, this is the way. You know, convert. But like I said, prior does change things. And you following up with people, keeping up with people, you you continually encouraging and laying that foundation. You ask them, what do you do when you feel that emotion? What do you do when you feel that 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 drive towards somebody of your own kind? What do you do? And so we, we you know, there's a scripture that I want to to point out to us, and I think this is a part of the, the foundation for why we address this this um, topic. Um, Romans one, very um, well known, very well known. It talks about those who change the glory of God into the image of corruptible man. Yeah, it went down to say that. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. It says, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their woman did change a natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in your lust one toward another. Men with men work in that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. So you see pe- individuals who you see own this, that this is the way for them. The Bible says God give them up. So obviously this goes back to what I was saying earlier on. If it's no longer a struggle for you, you're, 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 up, to you're up to it. But what we're saying is that our sexuality in God, right? We were made, the Bible says the woman was made for the man. Come on, man were made for the man we were designed no forced entry no no, Come on, no man. none of that you know no <laughs> nothing will you're perfectly designed the right the right equipment and right so, equipment come on jesus <laughs> so as, as we emphasize what the word says but we we, we talked about it last week the bible said that the yeah. woman her desire will be towards her husband yeah, so, yeah, that's what the desire will be so You know, it is abnormal to find this among ourselves, but it's not the end of it. It's not the end of it. So I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking. I I am attracted to women, but I'm not attracted to every woman, right? Follow me, follow me. Within myself, right? I'm around a lot of different women all the time. But then there are certain women that I find more appealing than others, certain, whether it be on a physical level, emotional level, whatever, right? Well, yeah, love, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, love. Well, I, I'm, I, have a, I have a method to the madness. I have a point that I'm, I'm trying to, to bring up, right? So for somebody then, I know for myself that, all right, when I'm around such and such a person, I'm cool. I have, have, have no issue or much issue. However, when I'm around such and such a person, I have to be fighting extra hard to, to maintain myself, to, to keep my composure, right? For a person that is struggling with, let's use the easy one, homosexuality, right? Is it the the attraction that is the sin or the yeah, smile <laughs> is it the attraction that is the sin or the act what if what if i'm attracted but i never act right i never act i never work on the impulse um i go my my entire life as a eunuch right it's just the attraction that that i i i, I, I don't know i see the young man in muscular and thick and Sometimes my mind tries to wonder, but I, I keep it under subjection. Am I am I still in danger of hellfire? 
All right. So let me let me rid myself of putting my opinion on the front line. Let me <laughs> let the metaverse that will support that answer. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed a adultery with her already in his heart. So to answer your question, the attraction and the act, both of them, is wrong. So you're saying, you're saying attraction is lost? You ask me if attraction is lost? Yes. Not, not attraction is... Let me think. <laughs> Tell me, I'm holding that word because I want to say it right. Attraction is not lost. Okay. That attraction is not lost. No. So no. the man is struggling with the attraction. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here is where it's different now, Romaine. Okay. Your attraction is not right. <laughs> it's not right. It's all. It's a, it's a, it's abnormal attraction. So if you attracted to a sister, but you know, in yourself, you say, "Yo, and you undress the sister in your mind and lusting after the sister." Th that that's different. That's that is lost. If you're you're you're, you're yeah. prompting all of that, but if you find a woman and you say she's attractive and you know she 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 catches your eyes, she catches your, your you know what you're looking for, and you find yourself not only physically but mentally. And emotionally attracted to this individual. That is not lust. Lust is when you you it goes a step further. Now you see this individual and you're wondering, you know, what it would be like and all of that. And for for a male looking at another male and being attracted to them. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying to say it right because okay. All right, let me let me let me let me let me, let me, let me, let me put a little spin on what I said. All right, put a spin on it. Put a little spin. Whew. If they're attracted <laughs> to that individual, Romain, and they're processing something else doing with that individual, then that that that's that's I think that's where the lost thing come in. However, if they find themselves attracted to that individual somehow, I mean, I think there's another step further before I would consider it a sin. <laughs> So that's the little spin that I'm a put, I'm gonna put on it because yes, the attraction is there, but you have some people the attraction is there, but they're fighting the attraction. If you get what so, I'm saying. What 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 kind of chicken you like? Ah, <sighs> curry chicken. Why not brown stew? Why not fry? No, I'm like I'm like curry. Sure. I like I like the color. I'm like curry cook. You like the color and like going cook, right? <laughs> them brother, yeah. Or them sister, yeah. Or whomever have these thing. They just can't stand brown stew chicken like oh you can't stand brown stew chicken. Or you feel like, or you feel like, boy, a something just, something just, 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 what's the word? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't even know. But to be honest, I think it's 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 deeper than himself. It's deeper than them physically. You know, like we've established last week that some things are just a spiritual battle. It's just a spiritual battle, and that's mean them them not, they're not attracted to that. Find out why. Like you said, there's always a cause to. Ah, there we go. Cause why don't you like brown stew chicken? You know, ah. has, has it affected you in the past before? What? what? So, you know, find out the root causes of, of, of different things that individual face. And then when we identify, then maybe you can show that not all brown stew chicken. It depends. Who, who cooked that brown stew? Who chicken? cooked the brown stew? Oh, my Jesus. Was it, was it brown stew or white stew? How did it look? Jesus. Find out, find out, find out why their mind was turned from that. You know, so identifying this would, would give us a better approach to addressing it. I've, I've I've been I I I had the opportunity or had the opportunity to be interacting with multiplicity of people, right? From all walks of life, from all walks of background and creed and beliefs and all of them, right? There are some persons that have stated that all their life they feel like something is wrong. Right? They 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 feel like you know <clears throat> the way they dress, the way they walk, the way they talk, what they like or are attracted to, 
or what they're being told to like or to be attracted to it's just are right they, they don't really feel like themselves right if we have persons like that around us right are we then saying to them just keep searching till you find something or <laughs> or are we saying if nothing suits you in order to maintain or to maintain a relationship or to make it into the kingdom, be a eunuch for Christ. Just just vow to stay away from all manner of, of activity. What what are what are we saying? What kind of advice are we are we putting out there? I mean, Romaine, like I said, we, we really have to get real because sometimes some some answers that we give people can cause them to be lost more than the thing that they're struggling with. And that's mm-hmm. just the truth of it. Now, if the individual say all their life they've been struggling to find what they're attracted to, that's what you said. So they, that's what that's what most of them claim that they they, they don't feel they don't, they don't so, feel like they're attracted to anything. Yeah, or so, they, they they feel like it's more natural. Like me as a man, like me, it's more natural for me to like an ex man. Like they will say stuff like that. Okay, so on that trend, so the same they like the same side. That's what you're saying. Either, yeah. All right. Um. Okay. So telling them to keep searching until they find is not the right answer, too. Because search until they find what? What if they don't find what you have in your mind for them to find? In their mind is that search until they find. No. On the other side, or remain as they are. Obviously, this person has something that is off with them, and. You know, if 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 they have if they are attracted to their own, that attraction gonna increase over time. You're not gonna be attracted to somebody and be around them 24-7 and nothing happen. Yeah. Now, you know, expect that to either develop or diminish. That's 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 just the truth of it. Now, advising them to stay by themselves doesn't take away from the, the, the desire that they have. So unless that desire is removed and they feel like they don't want either, then they, that's their decision to make to either remain a eunuch. But we cannot tell somebody to be a eunuch. The word says that people make themselves eunuch for the kingdom's sake. We cannot make them eunuchs. So I would say just as we've addressed, just as keep praying and, and reaching out to these individuals and talking to them and counseling and all of that, make sure that, you know, we we give them ways to control themselves when they're around individuals that they find attractive. Yeah. How, how do you do you move away from we move away from that crowd? If you find this this man attractive, then you're a man. Do you move and go somewhere else? Smart. I mean, that does not solve it. That doesn't solve it. So what I'm saying is, what really can we do? What can we do? <clears throat> So I, it's I, it's easy, it's to me. Well, let me not say easy. It's easier to to hide away from the enactment, right? To get yourself out of a potential physical situation, right? But the attraction itself is more internal, yeah. right? It, it's a it, you. I can be attracted to you, and you have no idea. That's true, right? Right? You have no idea. And so I think the, the difficult part of it is combating the attraction. There was this story that I heard. This is this disclaimer. This is not within our organization. All right? Those that are listening, this is, I'm not referring to anyone from our organization. Right? But I, I heard about um, an evangelist. Right? that has same-sex attraction. Love the Lord is, you know, love the ministry, love the work, all that stuff. But you know him have, him, him have them kind of feelings, right? And so what he does to prevent himself from going crazy, right, is that when he's going out to work, he surrounds himself with, with, was it five or six mothers of the church, right? Orderly women to, to mentor him, encourage him, you know, 
Because anybody, anybody who's done any kind of real ministry knows that after preaching done comes problem, right? And so when he's when he's on those off moments, right? They have these persons to come around and you know rotate and to encourage him and to talk to him and to any kind of way. Do you feel like that is a is that appropriate on two levels? One, in the sense that you know, he's still having these attractions. Should he be even holding a position like that, right? Um, because that's another, that's, a, that's another issue, right? Um, how do we navigate something like that, right? People sacrificing their times to basically keep him on guard. Um, it, it's, a, it's, it's complicated, right? And again, that internal attraction. I can lie to you all day. I can lie to you all day, Nicole, right? Tell us a boy, and I just love girls, bro, blah, blah, blah. Because I'm just telling you what you want to hear to get it off your chest. Right. But when you're talking about those persons that are that are seriously, like, wanting to get better, that wanting to, to um, look in the scripture and see the dynamic that God is talking about and experience it, right? I, I, I feel as if, that that take that requires a supernatural touch. I feel that's no no ordinary no ordinary thing can 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 change something like that because it, it there's a lot of as we talked about the the the, the, the demonic forces that behind the scenes that are that are pulling these strings. Uh, when they get bind up to a certain level, when when you when they're in there for a time. It takes some extra power, some extra anointing. Yeah. I know, no, no normal, no normal fasting and prayer can remove some of these things, right? Yeah. And yeah. you're talking about, you're talking. That's just that's 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 just one of the the many issues that we are having, right? What about what about the men and the women that they have a spouse, but they might they might give them some real bun, right? They might give them some real so real fire, right? These are also things that are in the church that are as equally as destructive as right. same-sex attraction, right? right? If I, as a man, God bless me with a wife, right? Give me my own sister and I make can drink from. But me, I look over upon my brother's sister and I look over upon, you know, pastor's sister and I say, boy, like pastor water, right? I'm in mean, tend to my own thing. Right, that's also an attraction, but still, it's an inappropriate attraction. Right, right? me supposed to me supposed to lock in for my wife. Me supposed to say, "Boy, honey, you are the best thing since sliced bread. I love cook food, and no cook food can touch you." You get me? I say like we we have to get to a point where we really put our bodies under subjection. And I feel like that is that is key. That is important, right? That is key. That is important. They, they, they like. I can, I can get into a whole spiel about um a lot of different things that happen to to me, right? Um, maybe we we'll save that for another personal interview episode. You know, if you want to hear more about me, um, in that sense. But to interview you. Yeah, interview me, right? <laughs> but there. But even with all of those things, I know that there's work that I have to do. And I think that's the point I'm trying to get at. While the church is fasting, while the church is praying, while the church is counseling, while the church is doing all these things, while your friends and families are surrounding and supporting me, you as a person, you as an individual also have to take responsibility for your life and for your strength. There's no way we can be fasting and praying, calling and summoning God but you just, you know, why? You, you, go, you go the same way and you just say, I'm going to observe God's creation. You as a big gray back man, I look at that gray back man and just, just a suck in it. I'm like, that's, that's, that's countering the work that we're trying to do, right? And so, again, even as myself, as a young brother, right? Trying to, to, to fight, to remain pure. Sometimes, man, if you just tell me, bridge in them, say, man, let me stay home. Right, yeah, I stay home because to all me feel right now, 
if me go out a road, a problem. If me if me go around such and such a person, me 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 my brain stop work. So me say I'm staying home. I'm gonna eat some popcorn, read my Bible. Just me and the words. Just have a a word night. You know, just something. But me can't me can't just feed into my feelings. And I think that's that's another thing that we we ought to remember is that how we feel has some merit and some value to God, but it doesn't supersede our responsibilities, right? God does care about how we feel. He does care about what we go through, but that still doesn't supersede our responsibilities outlined in the scripture. There's things that we have to do. There's things that we have to maintain. There's things that we have to be aware of. And so just because something doesn't make you feel quote unquote happy or quote unquote comfortable doesn't necessarily mean that you should just throw it out. Sometimes you have to go through some pressure. Sometimes you have a fight. It's a struggle. I think you mentioned it. If you're, if you're not a struggle, if you're not a fight, you just give into it, right? You just succumb to it. And as children of God, as as people, as humans, um, we have to be equipped to know that when we say we're gonna follow Christ, when we profess Christ, right, we're we're also professing that we're gonna put ourselves on a back burner, right? We're gonna put our our desires to the left and pick up Jesus, right? And when it comes to picking up Jesus, there's a lot of things that have to cut off. There's a lot of things that have to they have to put to aside, right? For myself, for, for as an example, I'm in like the prime of my youth, right? Now, right? Time for man get married, yeah. So knowing that, I'm not gonna just open up myself to just take in all kind of content, right? I know myself. I know what triggers me, right? On a on a on a good day, make can just see something and you know bother me you know trouble me right but on a rough day when me I fight hard right if the breeze blow me in a trouble I'm having to say God holy man servant right so if you are finding yourself whether um it, your, your attraction is appropriate or your attraction is inappropriate there's still there is still ways on how to control yourself and this is why the Bible speaks about temperance or self-control as a fruit of the spirit right you are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god right if you if you are exhibiting or if you want to be a child of god you have to exhibit those fruits and self-control is is a is a very very important and crucial part of how we maintain our integrity right we can't just see everything and want it we can't just have a desire and, and, and just jump on it, right? Evaluate a desire. Is this actually something that God wants me to pursue? Is this something that aligns with the scriptures and with the words of God? There's a lot of things that feel good, but in a righteous way. A lot of things that, that um, at first glance, what's wrong with it? You get what I'm saying? But at the underlining core, it, it chips away at certain foundations that, that, that God um instructs us to maintain right and so there 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 there's a lot when it comes to sexuality and sexual attraction that we really need to start paying more attention to not just not just um narrowly looking at it from from oh oh you like guys and you're a guy we're done with you right but again digging into that 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 person's um life right allowing them to feel even comfortable enough to to express what had happened to them these can open up different avenues and channels and i can i can almost guarantee you i've be, i've yet i have yet i have yet to meet one one deviated person that has not gone through something traumatic that has not gone through something that 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 radicalized this kind of a feeling or behavior nobody who just who just get up and have a decent respectable normal childhood um or adolescence just get up one morning and say i like the same sex 
I've yet to meet one. If there's somebody out there and want to come on the show and we talk about it, we can talk about it, but I've yet to meet it. Every single time I interact with a person who is of that kind of a deviation, there is some kind of trauma. Somebody molest them, somebody rape them, somebody do something to them. I'm not saying that those are the only causes of these things, right? But a lot of them have these kind of, uh, of uh, issues, right? And because they went unresolved, because they, they, they were not dealt with appropriately, and then attached to that is this, is this, uh, the sexual liberation, right? Just going in for anything where you want to do whatever you want to. You see, that's a problem, right? It, 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 the, the society now feeds into okay. You have you every everything now. You know you're, you've been you've been trapped in the closet. You've been whatever, whatever, right? No, somebody hurt me, and I'm expressing the hurt through this avenue, right? I wasn't I wasn't designed to like man, because that would counteract the design of God, right? If God wants man and woman to copulate and to produce children and further the lineage of life, why then is he going to do the opposite of that and make man want man, right? That, that don't make no sense, right? And so there's, there's so much, there's so much that that is tied up into these things that we need to, Again, be very careful of when we're dealing with them, when we're talking to them. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a very sensitive matter, and right now, as we say, we're not going to pretend and be naive that you know there aren't persons that may be struggling with it, right? But before it break out like a sore, before the 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 heart's gone way too far out of the gate, let us do what is appropriate to put a lid on some of these things. Right and to and to get these persons the, the necessary help, the necessary counseling, the necessary you know prayer and fasting and all these different things that they that are required to to help them realign. Also, the church, I believe, it's time for us to get our own counselors, get our own. I'm talking like certified, trained counselors because most of the counselors and 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 psychologists and whatever you find out in the world today, they're gonna say, yeah, man, you have to get normal. Right, even after their own studies tell you that it's a mental problem, right? They 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 have so many different books. It's just in the recent years they start to normalize these things, right? But in times past, like they they would have locked you up in an asylum if you feel if you feel them kind of funny with it, right? And so it's time for the church, I believe, to to encourage our our youths that are going out there to to study. Think about how can I develop a ministry out of this? How can I um, help someone that is struggling with these kind of things, right? The, the, does, is God calling me towards that field for this purpose, right? Because unless we have men and women in these key positions to combat some of these things, we're always going to be behind the bar. We're always going to be behind the bar. And I feel like it's important for us to get into positions of change, to get into positions of power that we can start affecting change. It better we try go and the door just shut down we and then no one way in there, then we just sit back and allow things to just run on um, as usual. And so our, our listeners, the essence is as it relates to sexuality from God's point of view or from a biblical point of view, is that this is another issue among the body of Christ. This is yeah. a problem that persists even as generations go on, even as social reforms you know, increase. This is just another issue. And I don't want to label it as just another. This is just, this is another serious issue. And uh, the, the, the scripture says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. The verse that catch me all the time remains says, casting down imaginations, mm -hmm. and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing them into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. And as we've established, 
if your sexuality is out of line, out of sync, out of order, this is something and this is a high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. And here the word says that the weapons that God equips us with, they're able to cast down these imagination, these feelings, these attractions, these disorders that ex- exalts themselves against the knowledge of God. So lastly, going back to what you were saying, Romaine, regarding the evangelists in this position. Now, I like what the, the, the women did. The women who surrounded him, who encouraged him. Yes, she, yes, um, he prayed. Yes, they pray with him. They fast with him. But they're also in his presence yeah. talking to him. And I, I, that is important. Being in someone's presence, even when they're struggling, is also important. Now, like you said, we cannot fix it. Putting a woman in front of him, just having a woman there by his side 24-7, is not going is not the solution is not the solution it helps but it's not the solution no like you said this is outside of human human intervention the word has to cast down that imagination the word has to subject the spirit of god has to subject those feelings and so what we're saying our listening audience is that any issue that we face and especially this one that we're addressing this isn't something that we can solve on our own. Yes, we pray and fast, and that that is the that is the approach. We pray, we fast, but we also counsel and encourage and make sure we're there as a physical support. Uh-huh. Talking on the phone at a distance is, is isn't the only thing that we can do or should do, but make sure that there's always physical life support for these individuals while you are putting in the work. God is putting in his work. God is changing those emotions, aligning them to what he originally desires. And so if there's anyone that you know, those listening, anyone you know who who may be struggling with their sexuality, even if yourself, you're struggling with your sexuality, these things can be fixed. The Bible says that there is no temptation uncommon to men. Yeah. And so we'll, 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 we'll run into these, we'll, we'll, we'll see these. But as the children of God, our approach will either help to change or help to push further. And so whenever we encounter these individuals, our first approach, as Romaine says, is, is the approach of love. Compassion yes. is very important among us. And if we possess these um, traits, these characteristics as the scripture wants us to have, then we'll win more people. We'll convert more souls to Christ. And so um, sexuality, according to God's words is what he designed natural affection between a man and a woman and we ought to promote that as the children of god we ought to to encourage that and when we see anything that is 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 against um that definition from god's words then we have to address it we have to apply the solution and while you were speaking um brother um remain when you mentioned should we take away that man from that position you know, the scripture says to be blameless. The scripture says to be blameless. And even though he was, he's in that position where he's, you know, struggling. I I, I am still not sure how to answer that. Honestly. <laughs> to have other ministers in position struggling with, with other things. Other things. So, and it goes right back to what I said about us categorizing what, what is super s- sinful <laughs> and what isn't. Right. But but our approach to it is is what counts. And so, you know, as a children of God, God is calling us to spiritual knowledge where we we learn how to handle matters arise. And you and I cannot do it up ourselves. We're just talking about it. Yeah. We're addressing this. We're just making it known that these exist. And it takes a spiritual mind to really help somebody um, cooperate with them and know that, you know, there is hope for them. And one thing that one example that I would um, leave with us is you see if you're around a smoker for a long period of time, we often use this one. You're going to come out smelling like, <laughs> you're smelling full of smoke. <laughs> right? So whatever you are around, whatever you're feeding yourself, it should have an impact on you. And I believe 100%, Brother Romain, if, if, if that person really wants to change and they're, they're, they're in the presence of Christ, oh my God, God going to drop the right attraction in them. If they're mm-hmm. in presence of Christ, Listen, the disciples, after the Messiah went off the scene, 
they knew that they've been with Jesus. Why? Because yeah. he was just all over them. And so that's the essence of what we're saying, that there is hope for those who struggle with this. And also it is not normal when we find ourselves being attracted to um, the same kind that God says that we ought not to. And so, Romaine, are there any final thoughts, final words that you want to leave on this topic? Uh, yes, just uh, those that are listening. I know most persons may think after seeing the title of the episode that we were going to get into every single attraction. So you have the homosexual, the demisexual, the pansexual. We, uh, that's, we put all of that as garbage, okay? The only thing that is, is true in the eyes of the Lord, right, are what he designed men and women to be, right? Man must attract a woman and woman must attract a man. All the other deviations, right? And we only refer to homosexuality throughout the, the, the discussion as reference, but yeah. it, it's in the context of everything, right? All the other deviations are exactly that, deviations, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I, love, I love a phrase that you've been using throughout your conversation is that, the attraction is inappropriate, right? And so I've, I've heard it many a times. And at first I was like, yeah, it kind of makes sense when, when they were saying that, okay, as long as the person is not doing anything, then they're fine. But the attraction itself is not of God. It's a deviation from the words of God. As you, as you read the scripture, exalting itself above the knowledge of God, right? And so... If you are struggling, whether as a homosexual or any kind of the other sexual, right? God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above, above all we could ask or think. His power is not limited, right? And so if, if, if you are somebody that has had those physical experiences, God can, God can quench that fire, right? Yeah. If you're someone that is just struggling with the attraction, God can remove that, right? Yes. And what I'm saying to you is that don't lose hope. Don't lose faith, right? God is more than able, more than able to, to remedy any kind of struggle that you're having, right? And whenever you feel low, Whenever you feel discouraged, whenever you feel like you're about to, to slip up or make a mistake, right? Um, seek help. Call out to a friend. Call out to a brother. Reach out to us, right? The, 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 we, we may not have all the answers, but I can guarantee you that we are not going to, to attack or to, you get what I say? Bring your, bring your spirits lower than you're already low, right? We're, we're going to do whatever we can, whatever the Lord inspires us to do, to encourage you in wisdom, in truth, so that we all can make it into the kingdom. Each one bring one. That's, that's my motto, right? If I can encourage somebody and they encourage somebody else, if I can teach somebody and they teach somebody else, that's how you, you spread the ministry, right? And so I know that I have my heteronormal struggles, right? I have my, <laughs> as, a, as a young man, me love woman, right? I, but I have my struggles too that I have to, to, to quell. I have to keep under subjection, right? Certain things I have to cut out of my life completely just to prevent myself from going down certain rabbit trails, right? And so whatever it is that we need to do to help you and the body of Christ to progress in the way God designed it, we are willing to do it. But again, you also have to take responsibility. You also have to do your own work on your end, right? We can do whatever we can to support you, but don't fight the support. Don't fight the, the aid. Don't, don't fight what we are trying to do to help you, right? Uh, and in doing so, you can change. You can change. This, this, this bad teaching, this bad doctrine that you can't change, it goes against the very fundamental core of the gospel, 
right? We are all sinners. We are all prone to our own desires and things, right? We're all, but God came to transform us by the renewing of our mind. So if you feel, are you here, are you, you're being told over and over again that you cannot change, that is a lie from the devil. That is a lie from the devil. The, 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 the words of God, right? The words of God teach us so many other times, so many other people who have gone through so many different things have been transformed by the power and the grace of God, right? And I will say to you, do all that is in your mind to do, right? And let grace and mercy do the rest. Bless God, amen, amen, and amen. And so our listeners, we do thank you for tuning in. We thank you for listening in. And so if you haven't left with anything, left knowing that there is hope, there is hope. And it's important that we, when we um, come across these issues, we take a non-judgment approach. Yes. First, um, correct, and take a non-judgment, judge non non-judgmental approach to these issues, and we'll see better results. And so, with your sincerity, with your willingness to change, you can change. And so, we pray that this was uplifting for someone who listened. I pray that you may even share it with someone who you know may be struggling, someone who needs to hear this. And so, there is hope, and we're saying that. God has a plan set for each and every person's life. And so while we pray, while we seek the face of God, know that there's issues that will we'll come across and they're, they're only common to men. And so with yeah. that, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for stopping by. And I pray that this session of The Buzz was buzzing in your midst. And so with that, we thank God for this opportunity. And so until next time, stay tuned, stay blessed, stay encouraged, be uplifted and know that the Lord is on your side all about the future yeah oh yeah same on zion you